Hi, my name's Maria Miller. I'm a junior at Scott Catholic. I like your work! <laughs> and this poem is titled, Cinnamon. Whenever he needed me, he would drive over to my house and wait outside. No matter how many feet of snow stationed themselves on my winding drive, or how the cold wind made his nose just as red as his frayed eyes were, every time I'd make hot chocolate sprinkled carefully with cinnamon. He would gaze up at the stars, and with his mismatched voice and the sorest mouth, he'd tell me about astronomy. He spewed numbers and sizes about the ever-expanding universe at like the computers who spend the duration of their lives calculating pi. The stars proved to him that he was an insignificant figure lost in an endless black sky of numbered planets and abuse. He'd talk about life like an unavoidable horoscope, death written in his stars. If only I had read them instead of scanning his body for new bruises painted on his skin like constellations or black holes ripped raggedly into his wrists that we didn't talk about the night he came crying because his dad had made it very clear that his daughter was not going to cut her hair like some dyke. I added extra cinnamon to his hot chocolate and I told him that sometimes men have long hair too and maybe that was okay. Two long blonde hair sticking to his hardened face. He locked his dew-covered eyes, still flushing redder than his tear-stained cheeks with mine, leaned in and told me that he loved me. I asked him to leave. He looked at me the way he always did, took the kind of breath that ties a knot in the divot where your neck meets your collarbones, gathering his last words before they tumbled out of his trembling lips. If that's what you want, I'm sorry. The day a letter arrived in the mail with four Maria written on the front in careful blank ink, I didn't open it, I made a hot chocolate. With his note in tow, weighing down my hand with paper or sentiment, I filled his navy cup to the brim. But when my hand shook just a little too much, the pieces of ceramic puddled at the tile at my feet. I was told there would be no funeral, and I never read that note. I poured its ashes into a small gray bottle, carefully sprinkled cinnamon over the still smoking gray remains that may as well have been his. That aging bottle still sits on my desk. It smells like spice like death, like all I have left of him, like regret, like his blood staining my feeble hands, like his I love you, I wish I could have honestly returned, like every no I forced into a sure because I was worried they would be the next bottle decorating my desk, like unread words I have tried so desperately to rewrite for him, like a thousand dead friend poems and angsty obituaries, it smells like cinnamon, and a constellation lost in the numbers that no amount of stargazing will ever bring back.